Right, hello and welcome to Short and Sweet Revision. This is our third revision video, so we hope we are finding them useful. And today's video is about Anil. Yes, and this is a short story from the anthology Sunlight on the Grass. Um, success criteria here, we're going to revise the key features of the story and apply our knowledge to answer an exam style question which will be shown at the end. Should be getting used to these now, uh, make your point, give an example, explain yep. your example and link it back, um, peel paragraphs. Okay. Okay, so let's get cracking then. So, plot summary. This story is all about a young boy who wakes up in the middle of the night needing the toilet, so he's bursting for a wee. <laughs> um, he witnesses a terrible murder and um, the, the story is kind of all focused around um, the headman trying to cover up the truth and the, the boy ends up being sent away to university. Because he's seen that what's it's happened what and they're seen. afraid that he's going yeah. to, um, to tell the truth. Also, worth noting, the young boy, he's seven years old. So yes. he's yeah, quite young, yeah. we need to focus on that. Okay. Okay, well, I'm not going to read this to you. You can read this at your leisure, but this is a little bit of uh, info about the, um, the writer, Rijal Noor. Um, the, one of the key things to, to notice is that many of his stories have a distinct multicultural aspect to them. And this is one of the stories, the first one that we've done that's been a real sort of different culture, different, totally different country. It's set in, um, what's it, in Malaysia. Um, he's actually from Singapore, so it's, it's different, different culture. That's I mean, right, that's right. Completely different uh, setting yeah. as well, which we'll get on to in a moment. Yeah, but do read through that. Okay, so setting. This story... Oh, I'll miss out, so I'll pass it over to you. <laughs> okay, um, time, place and situation. The story is set in a small village in Malaysia and we know that the, they are quite poor. He sleeps on a mat mm -hmm. uh, in a hut that has a thatch roof. There are holes in the roof which he can see the sky. That's probably why, like we say, mm -hmm. you know, we said earlier about him looking at the stars and being fascinated. Um, the tree is quite important, its vines seem to wrap around everything. And we've put the train here as well, because at the end of the story, the young boy is actually on the train saying goodbye to his father. So we'll deal with each of these yeah, points but, uh, separately. But they're the main places yeah. to um, consider. Okay, so the point of view. So this is who is telling this story. And the story is actually written in third-person narration, so it's... Um, Look, we, we understand Anil's thoughts and feelings, but it's, you know, he, he was this, he, um, Anil Lewick on his map. But the story actually does move on and towards the end, and it uses um, the first person, which is in, in, in italics right there. That's right. on page, I'll flip through. Okay, and I'll just say the, and, and this is a way of showing us, us his uh, personal thoughts. Mm. I will never forget this town and the sin that it buries today. So it's had a profound effect on him, something that he will remember uh, for the rest of his, his life. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this combination of the third person and the snapshots of um, the first person is a real sort of technique that is used to, to express the, the thoughts and feelings of, of Anil and how, you know, he's, he's been deeply affected by this. I will never forget this town and the sin. So th this snapshot, uh, on this incident has really kind of set his life off yes, in, 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 yeah. a, in a direction which perhaps it was never going to, yeah. to, to yeah. happen. And of course, we know what happens. You've you, you've read. The, please read the story more than once to yeah. get the uh, understanding of it. You do need to do that uh, because you see at the end that his life has changed because he's been sent away yeah. because of what he's seen, um, which is no yeah. fault of the, his this own. This was never part of his life plan. He was going to stay in that village. That's right. He was for the, for the, the entirety, probably of his probably life. Probably never yeah. have gone away. But exactly. the elders obviously yeah. pay for that education and yeah. want, which they wouldn't do for no. if this hadn't happened. Okay, and if we move on, we'll actually have a look at these characters. Okay, so with characterisation, um, these are the key things that you need to have a look at. Physical description, dialogue, action, uh, the, the actual comment from the author. Yeah, because the author might be putting words into a character's um, mouth uh, that they want to put across. So even though it's the character speaking, sometimes in stories or in poetry, mm -hmm. the author will be telling us something through that character. Uh, Miss, are you going to say something about the characters? Because I know earlier when we were talking about the father figure, yeah. um, it, there is a little bit of confusion because yeah. he has two names, doesn't he? Yeah, and this is why you should definitely read the story more than um, once. 
So some of the characters have more than one name. So we have Anil, who is just Anil, who's the, the young boy. Year old boy. Yeah. yeah. We have um, the, his mother, who we don't actually know her proper name, but she's called Amma, which means mummy and mother. And we have the father, who's called Appa, which means daddy, father, and his uh, name to the rest of the village, which is Ragnath. Nathan. Oh, Nathan. Yes. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> if we are getting yeah. these uh, names wrong. Dragon Nathan. But would you like to just, should we just say something about the father figure? Yeah, so the, the, I think the key thing here is that he has got these different names and this can show some of the different roles he plays within the story. So he's obviously daddy, daddy to Anil, he's, he's, he's mm -hmm. the father. Um, in terms of his household, he is the head of the family. And we have on page, what is it? 35. 35 top of page 35, we talk about how he could see his father's close-knit eyebrows and his thick moustache. His father, he is a bully to his family and a timid mouse to the headman. So I think he has these different names to represent the different roles that he plays. So he is a, he's a bully to his, his family. We, we find out that he has actually beaten his wife. Yes. And, uh, but in terms of society within the rest of the village, he is uh, Raganuthan, who is the servant of the headman. So That's right. So he's got quite an important position yeah. in society. And that, the, this position of power or this power hierarchy is quite important in Malaysia, where the story, story is set and in this story. Mm -hmm. um, and it does say um, a timid mouse to the headman, but he, it also says he's a burly man, so he's quite big. Yeah. So he would have a physical presence, I think. Definitely. And this, um, even within their family, this hierarchy is, is present within society and the family. So within the whole village setting, he's quite low down, but within yes. his family, he is the head of the family. That's right. And that, I think that's quite important. And it's also quite important when we look at the other two characters we've got Marimuthu who's the headsman's brother so he'll be quite high up and the headman and uh, Marimuthu is actually um, he's killed his wife or they, they hung the wife in the tree and he has been able to cover up this murder or get yes. away with this murder because he is further up that chain of yes. command. Yeah. There's no, um, no reason in the story is there we're not given a reason in the story as to what's happened but no. um, We've talked about yeah. it being an honour killing of some kind, but maybe not. I mean, that we hit, we read about that in the news, but you're not really told why. Mm -hmm. But we we should understand that it was male orientated society, yeah. and he's yeah. obviously been able to get away with it, away with it, uh, yeah. and cover it up. I okay, think, and the headman. So if we move on from there, if we look at the sort of symbolism and interpretation of things that are present in this story. Um, I put here the darkness. So at the beginning of the story, we have um, Anil is lying there on his mat and he's, um, he's bursting for a wee and he's looking out um, up at the sky and he doesn't want to leave the hut because it's dark and he's scared of these ghosts, okay? Yeah. He says they, ghosts, okay? So he's really scared and he doesn't want to um, go out there. That typical children, you know, yeah. that kind of age where you're a little bit afraid. Like the boogeyman, he's yeah. out there. Yes, type thing. yeah. yeah. So, th so that's his initial fear, isn't mm. it? And, but that does change. Yeah. But he has this fascination for stars, and mm. he probably lies there looking through the holes in the roof. Um, there's a quotation here you've put in, Miss, because he mm. believed in the magical wonders of life because his dreams were bigger than him. Um, that is such a telling line. He has these dreams. Probably he dreams maybe of going to school, going to university, and it does come about, but it comes about for the wrong reasons, yeah. um, which is, is quite a big thing. So, I mean, we all kind of, I think we can all relate to this dreams bigger than, than him, this yeah, idea. Definitely. The tree as well is quite important, Miss, isn't it? The, uh, he sees the tree, this ghostly tree that grew in front of the hut, and there's a couple of times the tree is mentioned where it's like a vine and it's kind of creeping around yeah. things and, and holding everything together. But again, that links into the his, his sort of yes. childlike fear of the ghostly tree. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and the tree obviously comes to symbolise what happened to the woman later on because yes, the woman is hung from course, the tree. Yes, of course. It's the, it, yeah. on line 71, the tree wrap it, wraps its vines around, you know, this fear of wrapping the, the vines around little children. It's like yeah. uh, it was a tree that ate little children and yeah. that's the myth and the, the myth story and the that goes with it. 
Um, oh, actually, can I just go back to the stars? Actually, yeah. Sorry, Miss. And um, when we talk about how at the beginning the whole village is asleep, okay, and and they're dreaming, and we have this real clear distinction between um, Anil and his bigger dreams, yes, and the other members of the village who are dreaming about their everyday types of lives. At the very the first paragraph, we've got things about how the farmer is dreaming about of a proper. Pot of, ugh, I can speak. profitable <laughs> harvest and the milkman is dreaming about a cow yes so and a sewing machine and these are the important yeah. everyday things that they want exactly but it shows how their life is so consumed with this everyday state. yes even it, may, it could be a struggle but that's why their lives are focused but Anil is dreaming of bigger things than that that's right and I just want you to pay attention to so obviously we have that on line 20 when he's talking about big dream then after the, all the in, um, incident happens if we move on to page 36 and we go to line 103 ish we have there are no more stars in the morning as Anil woke up to a noisy commotion outside the hut I think that shows how as soon as he's seen this murder as soon as he's mm. seen this incident mm. he doesn't notice yeah but his, his, his dreams things. his uh, yes. reality life has come sort of crashing down and he sees the reality of life and, and he there are knows no more stars yes and he knows his life has yeah, changed he's from seen this his point. lot yeah, okay he? yeah um the hook we've talked about haven't we although insects, I, insects. Yeah. this a mosquito had embedded its pain upon him i think is a fantastic line yeah. you can actually f almost feel any of you that's ever been uh, had a mosquito bite and they are they can be quite painful that line is fantastic isn't yeah, it definitely. the way it's written yeah i mean and that links in again to, with the setting um, we have at the start it talks about how it's an on a hot sweltering night in the middle of march and the mosquitoes were in their reign of terrorism i love that yes That's reign of line, terrorism but, yeah yeah and so linking in with the symbolism and the and the setting it's building up this atmosphere it's quite an uncomfortable yeah. atmosphere yeah. It, humid you know yes. right for something yes. to go wrong isn't yes, it yes it is yeah um I was going to say as well, the language used to build up this, this setting um, is really important mm. in, in all the stories, but the, the writing here is very, um, you know, it's pitched perfectly, isn't it, Definitely. to build up this. Yeah. Uh, should we move on to the next yeah, one will. then, Miss? Okay, so themes. Okay. Uh, we've said this before, the ideas presented by the writer are often implied. You really have to look between the lines, um, mm, yeah. you know, and it's that insight into what is implied rather than said that will get you those higher grades. The examiners like to see different interpretations. We're giving you our interpretations, yeah. but you know, you, you probably... might have a totally different yeah. idea about this. Yeah. But this is what it's all about. It's about thinking about it, thought provoking, think about other people's point of view. Yeah, that's right. So it, the themes um, implied and shown in this story. Child, childhood dreams, childish dreams, the childlike innocence, the reality of life that sometimes can be quite violent, which is also a, a theme here, and this social order, who has the power, which we've, uh, we touched on earlier. This childlike innocence, that's touched on in mm. a few of the stories in the collection. Yeah. Um, the relationships with parent and child as well. Yeah, well, compass and torch. We compass and torch, yes. The, the, yeah. the innocence. Yeah, so these themes, I think the, the big thing here is that stark contrast between Anil being so innocent Seeing this yes. horrendous crime and then being thrust out into this yes. adult world. He's been sent, it's only seven, yeah. what, and they talk about university, so he's, he's clearly being sent away mm. for a long time. And everybody is kind of conspiring to, yeah. to make this happen. Obviously, yeah. um, at the bottom of line, page 37, were... Um, he he asks them all, you know, what are we going to do? And the authorities, and they say that she's committed suicide. And then turns to them and says, "What do you all think?" Rhetorical question because they'd be too scared to speak out against, you yeah. know, and tell the truth as to what has happened. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, as you say, the head man he says, "Yes, what do you all think?" This is anything. There's no need to do this. So it's almost challenging everybody. Yes, it and, is, and he, it's demonstrating his power and how he's been able to get away with that. They're all afraid, so they all agree. Yeah. That's that's it. Okay, shall we Definitely. move on to the next yeah, move one? On. Um, structure, again, as we always say, think about your your typical story mountain, your uh, story. How, does it fit a regular 
structure with the introduction and then you have the rising action where the storyline continues something happens to change it you have the falling action then you have the denouement or the resolution something happens yeah. now I think we, it's the question next Miss yeah Miss and we'll all. leave you with the question oh, oh the so summary. Is a summary summary I mean we haven't been able to touch on all of the points but we'll just leave with you some a yes. summary of the different things you can think about definitely yes have um, a look again have a real look at the end of the story because we haven't been able to talk about all those different lines but there's some really yeah. great stuff the, language, the in, language in this story um, yes. I'm going to leave you with this question here um, yeah discuss I'll oh, and, go on and, and sorry it's on there as well yeah and as always the grade criteria okay um, and for the C oh. grade don't forget show, you know move, read in between the lines um, we'll be doing another um, one soon won't yeah, we I think we're going one. to do